Hello guys. Welcome to Q&A Hub. Hope you like our videos. If so don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button for more amazing videos. Let's jump to our today's video. Harass me for 18 months? No big. Say one negative thing about my love? I'll have your job. Long post. I've debated whether to post this for a while. Y'all will tell me, please, if you think it doesn't belong here. I've been a waitress for a few years now, and this happened at my last restaurant, from December 2014, when I was hired, to May 2016, when I had enough. So y'all can follow along, the players in this month's long drama are. C, long term, cool, I'm fair but I take no shit GM. A, kinda chill a GM. J, the source of my misery, and low man on the management totem pole. E, one of the cooks, who was more than a cook to me. I was hired on the spot, and kinda thrown into working without being introduced around. No big. About a week after I start, the assistant manager, Jay, is introduced to me. I don't like her on site, but I can't say why. Sometime in the few days after that, when she sees me running through the kitchen, Jay calls after me, slow down, thunder thighs. Oh. Oh, no. I stop short and back up a few feet. I put on my best mom glare, RBF combo. What did you just call me? Let me pause here and tell you, I'm fat. I'm not chunky or chubby or THICC. I'm well into mega chonk territory, teetering close to oh, lod, she comin'. Meanwhile, Jay has a dirty Q-tip aesthetic. Nothing against skinny, I just hate this particular skinny chick's guts. She hears me and starts sputtering and backpedaling. I just meant because you were running. It doesn't mean I think you're fat or anything. Come on, lady. Blind people can see I'm fat. It's no secret. I tell her I don't care why she said it, I expect her to call me by my name. This, I could have let slide. I'm not unreasonable, mostly. I let it slide when I had to tell her on two more occasions to stop calling me thunder thighs. To shorten this story, following is a quick list of things I let slide. Told me most of her friends were big girls, and that she thought we were gonna be besties. Oh. There's why I instinctively didn't like you. Asked what was wrong with my face during a bout of acne. Came to work wearing a blouse and pants. Disappeared mid-shift. I found her in the public restroom, trying on a dress. Told me my walk needed to change because my hair was too whippy repeatedly crawled up my ass about my facial piercings being out of uniform, while dismissing her own non-compliance with the same policy. Demanded I explain my job duties, though I had been employed a year already, was cross-trained, and did my jobs quite well. Screamed, what the fuck do you want me to do about it, in my face when I told her there was a possible gas leak I could smell in the dish pit. Regarding an extended absence due to problems with my foot, she repeatedly asked if I had foot spores. She couldn't tell me what this meant, and screamed for me to Google it. So I did. I had to tell her that, while it's not any of her business, I did not have athlete's foot and the days off had been because of surgical scarring. The absence had been approved by C, the GM. All of this, I let slide. Occasionally, I spoke with the GM and AGM about the problems, both separately and together. At this point, it was more of a dude, you won't believe what this idiot did now, because I really wasn't concerned. Approximately 18 months into my employment, things went south. I believe you have the right to your opinions, however effed up they may be. You just don't need to voice those opinions, and certainly not in a work environment, and extra certainly not within hearing of the general public. Over the course of a few weeks, she offered up her political opinions about gay marriage, she's against it. Surprised? Me, neither, and later, about transgenders, guess what she thinks. Well, that was just about the final straw for me. I had a serious discussion with A, who encouraged me to start writing stuff down. I admit I procrastinated because I didn't want to deal with the repercussions if J wasn't terminated. The final straw was when she turned on E he was a cook, and his job mostly consisted of standing over a hot as balls steam table in a restaurant with a broken A, C unit. Did he sweat? You betcha. Did he sweat a lot? Gah. Yes. E would sweat like he was a pig on its way to a barbecue in August. 
Poor man was, at times, the moistest, most moist, person I ever knew. He would sweat like he had a circumcision scheduled in the morning. E did his job well and without complaint. At the end of our shift, he quietly came from the kitchen to the soda fountain and fixed a glass of water. He chugged it down and fixed another. With a repulsed sneer in her voice, Jay said, E, why you sweatin' so much? That was enough. I loved E. I didn't treat him as well as I should have, but I loved him and I was damned if someone, anyone was gonna criticize him. I wrote a scathing, three-page letter to corporate when I got home that night, detailing every instance of Jay's toxic behavior, and turned it in the next day. I was told that our field manager from out of state called Jay and told her she had a week to file her resignation or he was going to fire her. She gave her two weeks notice, but was gone in three days. Unfortunately for C, A was on a month-long trip out of the country, so C was forced to work 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily until A's return. By the fourth week, C was a little loopy from lack of sleep, but still managed to find the mental acuity to randomly yell across the restaurant, I'd like to give a shout out to my girl, Sar 2 a 2 ne without whom we wouldn't be happy today, as she'd been yelling several times a week. I worked for the company another year before I moved on. It wasn't idyllic, but the new assistant manager was much better at his job. Last I heard, Jay was an assistant manager at a fast food restaurant, and took a serious pay cut to get the job. The only downside to my story is he passed away a few months after I left. His last memory of me was less than stellar, and I will carry the guilt and grief of that forever. But I know I did right by him, when I once made a stand for him that he couldn't make for himself. TLDR, assistant manager harasses me over a period of months, does not bother me says one wrong thing about dude I loved, so I used the harassment against her and she left the job. Let's move to comments section. Oh lord, she's coming. My sides. You've broken them. Tip for ya. Don't read that bit of the post in the middle of a lecture. It's impossible to hide an erection. I can hide them just fine thank you very much less than hands on hips greater than. You didn't get her fired. She got her own stupid self fired. If all you say is true, she should have been gone long before she was. I am so sorry to hear they passed on. Was it old age or illness or accident related? Best guess was accident related, long term, 10 years or so before I met him, he was hit by a car. He died from an aneurysm that probably occurred because of the accident, dragged by a car, month long coma. He was happy while he was here, and he knew I loved him. That's what matters now. I appreciate your sympathy, though. As long as he knew that, and passed on knowing that, you have no reason to feel guilty over what transpired before he shuffled off this mortal coil. Kudos to you for sticking up for him, your courage, and your love. The only downside to my story is he passed away a few months after I left. His last memory of me was less than stellar, and I will carry the guilt and grief of that forever. Do you remember the cringy things people did to you in school? Well, they don't remember your bad moments either. If he was as good a guy as you say, he remembers you at your best. Upvote for the most country style post I have ever seen. Ha 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 ha. I don't know if that's aimed at the assistant manager or me, but I'll take it. Your language makes me think you are from the south myself, is that the case? Great, and sad, story, thanks for sharing. Technically the South, yes. I live in Virginia. Did anyone else read Dishbit as Dipshit and get really confused? Same. I was editing before posting, and I had to pause there, too. I hope you write more. This cracked me up and it was well written. So sorry about E, your writing really reflects how much you cared for him. Are you writing the great American novel in your spare time? If not, you should be. Your writing is incredible good on you for standing against a bigoted tyrant. And I love the way you wrote this. I like you and your personality. I have THICC thighs too, and this is TMI, but I just got this powder from Lush, that I'm really excited to try. You do you, it seems like it's always worked out that way. You stood up for E, and that's important. I'm really sorry about the way he was treated by others, and his passing. Maybe you can put some flowers on his grave. Either way, he isn't slaving over a hot stove all day anymore. Like he had one schedule. 
He already was. Had it done when he was a baby, no doubt. But we did have a couple conversations about his belief that the doctors stole his penis while he was in a coma, and gave him someone else's in exchange. Wait. Why did he think the doctors switched out his penis when he was in a coma? He would sweat like he had a circumcision scheduled in the morning, made me giggle. You're funny and tell a good story. I normally have trouble reading long posts but not this one. While I don't think her political views are necessarily wrong, that is something you should not bring up in front of customers. As a chubby trans male, I would just love to meet Jay and talk to her for a few minutes. I pass so well that I actually shock people who don't know. Her jaw would be on the damned floor. I would pay good money to see that interaction. This is a terrible management set up. You don't need three managers. She was going to get fired either way, right? Her position was redundant. Lucky you could give her a nudge before C didn't have to. Great story, by the way. Def not true. My work has four managers, one GM and three regular and we def need all four of them so none of them get burnt out. If only one manager is assigned to the restaurant, that manager works 18 hour days, every day. No time off. If two managers are assigned to the restaurant, both managers work 9 hour days, every day. No time off. OR, they alternate 1 or 2 18 hour days, in order to give their co-manager days off. Three managers assigned to a restaurant are minimal, allowing each manager to have two scheduled days off and one day per week with three managers throughout the day. In a well-managed restaurant, this day would invariably be the busiest day of the week. Thanks for- Hello guys. Welcome to Q&A Hub. Hope you like our videos. If so don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button for more amazing videos. Let's jump to our today's video. Give me the silent treatment for something out of my control? I'll ruin your birthday and make you question your manhood. My ex-boss was not a good person. He was controlling, egotistical, quick to anger, a womanizer and hated depending on anyone, because that would mean he isn't in control. Boss ran a sports program, which grew from 600 to 1000 over my time working there, and had hired me to run the office and head the children's programs due to my experience working with larger programs in the same sport. Children make up about 80% of the program. Boss thought he was too good to mix with most of his clients or their families, he mixed mainly with the adults, particularly the attractive female ones, and never answered to phone or general emails. So pretty much everyone knew, contact Pepper for anything. So one day an email gets sent directly to him addressed to Pepper and Boss. He didn't talk to me for the rest of the day. I tried to talk to him, email him and get answers I needed for his business and he was ignoring me. I thought I was going mad as he had never done this before, and I'm fairly soft spoken at work, did he just not hear me while I was 5 feet away. The next day I asked him a question and he responded with, don't you know? I mean you're so important that people address emails to you first. I was fuming. Like you are seriously willing to jeopardize your business and clients because of a literal nothing, treating me like crap, all because your ego can't handle it? No. Not going to let that stand. One last thing. Boss is turning 50 soon. I was 26 to 27 at the time and he had vaguely come onto me before gross but it never went anywhere. I knew he was feeling insecure about getting older and was questioning was he still a man, still strong and virile, would he still have it for the ladies. I knew what had to be done. We are talking and I mention I know his birthday is coming up soon, how old would he be? 50. Wow, a milestone. My mum turned 50 a few years ago and it was quite an affair. Then I dropped this. The Devastator. You're only a few years younger than her. Ha, huh, I guess that means you're old enough to be my father. He immediately clammed up. He didn't speak to me for the rest of the day and didn't come in for the next two. Checkmate. Asterisk asterisk this was almost five to seven years ago. I've found the best way to ask innocent questions and, or if you really wanted to rub it in, give him a surprise party. Act like you're observing out loud without malice, when actually that's what you're doing. Congrats. You're older than disco. Half a century old can you believe it? 50 candles on the cake. Get a smallish cake, so they'll barely fit. 
or stick a few in the side cuss they don't all fit. Don't forget the innocent joke that you've got a fire extinguisher available in case he can't blow them all out. And one he can't blow out for luck. Well, we tried to get you 50 candles, but that many just didn't fit, not to mention the fire hazard. However, one is easier to blow out, so make your wish. I love that your fairly innocuous comment so bruised his crystalline ego that it knocked him out of work for two whole days. What a dried flower! Crystalline ego, is my new favorite phrase. Use it as much as you like. It would be a great band name. I also like dried flower. Until you mentioned his age I thought this was the beginning of a tell-all book about Bernie Excelstone. Kinda disappointed now. Great job though. Reminds me of my old boss, I was fired for, never coming into work, although I had missed a few days here and there it was due to family emergencies and she knew that. I was fired, offered no explanation and walked into work only to be embarrassed in front of my coworkers because I was no longer on the schedule. Turns out she knew all the regulars liked me more, go figure they never saw her ever and I was in every day, and she didn't like that my regulars regularly talked bad about her and not liking her, although I never gave my opinion on it, so ya, dot she fired me for being more likable, not my fault she was a bitch and had zero customer service skills and an 18 y.o. was could do it better than her. Funny. My customers all love me to death. My boss says I'm unlikable. My dad. As in, your likability factor is like, zero, mace. But he won't fire me because he knows I'm the point of contact for so many people. He also refuses to apologize. I'm afraid to ask him to elaborate. I'm the main point of contact for the account I work in. I also have more tenure than anyone else in the account, including my boss. Started from the bottom, worked up to where I am now, so I know everything except the supervisory, labor management aspect. Anyway, my point is that I've had a lot of time to develop a really good working relationship with so many external contacts, and I have the knowledge, solutions immediately ready for almost any situation. They love me, and they hate it if I'm out for even one day. Yet. I don't deal with people well, generally speaking. Data, analysis, processes, procedure, that's my thing. I love it and I'm good at it. It kind of hit me a while back, why this us. I had answered a phone call, short conversation, hung up. Someone else was in the office and overheard. She was the quintessential bubbly, social, talkative type and was always pushing me to be more social. After the call ended, she looked so excited and exclaimed, you used your people voice. I hadn't realized that I used a different voice for customers, contacts than I use for general interaction with coworkers. And that's when I realized that I'm pretty okay at dealing with people in a professional setting, because there's kind of a set formula to those types of interactions part of which is using a people voice. I know what to expect, more or less, and I know how I'm supposed to respond. So people seem to like me professionally, dot but socially? I'm awkward as hell. Don't really have any friends, never get invited out for anything. I'm always obviously uncomfortable at social functions because there isn't a set formula to follow like there is in a professional setting. I feel like I'm a batter, constantly trying to hit curveballs. And the times I actually manage to connect, there's a decent chance it will end up being a foul, law. So my, likability, in a social context is pretty questionable. So maybe you're kind of like me. Or maybe your dad is just a jerk. That could totally explain it too. Wow, this is the best comment I've seen that describes me. Awkward as hell socially, but great professionally. If I could, I would give you gold. Give him a birthday cake with the text congratulations to 60 years. No 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 you gotta do a cake with a handwritten, hand iced, congrats so the 50 looks a little too much like a 60 and once you notice it that's all you see and oh put a candle right in the hole so it definitely looks like a 60. Or just let it say 60 and say the bakery made a mistake, so they gave you a discount. Let me hop onto this one and say the bakery made a mistake but you didn't want to correct them because 60 birthday cake gets senior discount. Good job. I'm sure that caused lots of staring into the mirror and personal affirmations that he doesn't look a day over 35. I'm glad it worked out. I've known many women who try that you're the same age older than my dad thing and it doesn't discourage them. Then again, nothing shy of mace would discourage those guys.
Well I only think he flirted with me to prove he still has it. I played dumb and let it sail over my head. Also he'd never seriously consider sleeping with me, not because of the obvious reasons, sexual harassment, he has a girlfriend and I have a boyfriend, but because I'd say I'm a 6, and he goes for 8s or higher. Yup. Just another layer of crap on this garbage human. Also I got his old work computer when he upgraded, it had Ashley Madison saved in the bookmarks bar and RSVP, a dating site. He had a lovely girlfriend whose daughter was in our program. LOL Astro read my post. Not only am I telling a similar story, but my username check out. We just celebrated my dad's 71st birthday. I put one candle on the chocolate cream pie I made. My niece asked why there was just one candle. I told her I didn't want to burn the house down. My dad laughed his ass off, he's got a great wicked sense of humor like me. I don't get it. Being 50 seems like it'd be great if you're not trying to be 25. Whose name comes first alphabetically? Gmail tends to list people that way. At least it does on my phone. Regardless, your boss is an idiot. His name was first alphabetically but that's not what it was. It was, Dear Pepper and Boss. So the person chose to put my name first and that's what ticked him off. Never mind that I was the only person they'd ever seen or interacted with. What is he? 8 years old? Jeez. If. I know 8 year olds better acting than him. He's more like a toddler. That's insulting to 4 year olds. He's a baby. Hey, babies aren't petty about things like that. So long as you give them food and play with them they don't care. He's a grown adult man with no emotional regulation skills. You're right. Embryo it is. Let me guess, every time an announcer said, ladies and gentlemen, he got pissy because he was second. I once worked as a 911 dispatcher 2000-2001 when I was 20-21. One of the more egotistical cops was making a big deal about his birthday. I found out it was his 40th, I was sitting there pregnant going, wow. That's how old my mom is. Without even thinking of it as an insult until the whole room started laughing and he looked deflated. After he left, I was thanked. He had always had an ego, and this was the worst bruise he's got from us. Leave a bottle of black hair dye in the bathroom, a subtle hint that he no longer is the one with no gray hair. If it vanishes the next one a month or two later should be the same brand, just replace the inner bottle contents with gentian violet hair rinse. Bet he will not come in with purple hair. Sounds like my old boss too. This made me laugh tears of joy that's what he gets. Holy shit you fucking killed him dude. Sign him up for the AARP mailing list. Horrible and so glad you so don't work there anymore. It's called narcissistic personality disorder. Slow clap I've worked with that guy, I wish I could do this. Well done, op. The new teacher in the classroom next to mine is old enough to be my granddaughter, more or less. It's a bit mind blowing. Youth is fleeting. Do not think you will be young forever except in your mind and heart. He deserves it but realize you will have this sort of age reminding happen to you eventually too. You Kulumbo, ed him. Niece. I would have gone with that you're old enough to be one of my grandparent since most of mine are in their 50s still. UKNKW he ain't it when he didn't capitalize and say call me daddy. What made him question his manhood exactly? Don't think I see that bit in the story. Genuinely curious because being told you're getting old doesn't affect being a male. Some men see age as weakness. Weakness equals equals masculinity. You don't sound like that very nice of a person to be around. To further elaborate on how, why I chose to respond in such a manner. I never once had a thank you, good job, I appreciate your hard work. Not once in four years in a small business. I was the person that worked with him longest. Everyone else either was forced to quit or fired. Someone with a suspended license was demanded they drive for a busy work job and risk their license fine, jail time. He quit. The one person who would stand up to him was fired and then when they tried to start a sports club that could have been affiliated with him plus getting a piece of their profits, he told them to F off. 
He forced one person to sign a brutal work contract with ridiculous non-compete clauses, such as will not work within the industry at all instead of for a direct competitor and or within a certain distance which is standard, then fired them a week later. I was running an event and we have people, volunteer, aka you need this for accreditation. I was in charge and it was clear I was running and organizing things and all boss had to do was stand there and tick things off on a clipboard. At the end there was a group pow wow, circle jerk and then we dispersed to clean up. One of the volunteers pulls me aside and congratulates me on my hard work. I'm just about to say thank you, when boss, who had walked behind us and overheard, cuts in with, it's because of all the training and programs of my sport program, it's all because of program's greatness. I said nothing but went and cried in a bathroom. In the four years I worked there he couldn't even let someone else say, good job, to me. What you said was hilarious. He deserved worse but that was great. Hello guys. Welcome to Q&A Hub. Hope you like our videos. If so don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button for more amazing videos. Let's jump to our today's video. Hurt my dog? I'll ruin your Yeezys. This is a mega petty story that just happened yesterday. I take my puppy out daily and we walk to the mall nearby together so I can get a drink and he can enjoy the summer sunshine. It was a hot day for us yesterday and so I decided to pick up some ice cream. I was just walking back into my apartment. I have a 4 month old puppy that I'm still trying to train how to walk properly but at times if I'm distracted he'll wander in circles around me to sniff and explore. Anyways my apartment is one that requires a key fob so as I was beeping in, I hear a loud cry, yelp from my dog. Which turns out this asshole was opening the door that I had beeped in, and he had opened it into my dog. My dog's still quite young and he doesn't know when to move away from things. It just broke my heart because he normally can tumble and play quite rough without making a sound so I was sure that this asswipe opened the door really hard into him. And he wasn't even supposed to open the door anyways because the property management is really strict on each resident beeping themselves in instead of letting strangers in. Anyways this guy didn't even apologize and he keeps walking inside into the lobby. I swoop up my pup in one hand and catch up with him while he waits for the elevator and we make eye contact and still no apology. So I notice that he's wearing beige colored Yeezys so I decided to accidentally drop my ice cream onto his shoes. I made pretended that my puppy had knocked it out of my hands since I was holding him at the time. Please note, after this happened, I said, oh no, loudly and left the lobby because I didn't feel comfortable with getting into the same elevator since he technically followed me in because he didn't use his fob. I stayed outside and called our property management and said that a strange man followed me in and gave them his description. Very petty and small revenge but that's what you get for hurting my dog. Now move to the comment section. Sounds like you let him off easy, op. I would have told him off. Cameras would suppress my first thoughts. Nobody hurts my furry babies. You totally would have, wouldn't you? Your dog was wandering around a lobby, high traffic area, unleashed. It's kinda your fault he got hurt then. Your friend was walking around in a shady neighborhood without telling you where they were? No wonder they got robbed and raped. You see how dumb that statement sounds? Also, Op never said the dog was unleashed, only that it was wandering around. Also Op said that the man was never supposed to even open the door. You're supposed to buzz yourself in, which the man didn't do. Yes, let's compare a felony to something that was probably an accident. Makes perfect sense. If it was an accident why didn't he apologize? You typically apologize after an accident, no? And why didn't he buzz himself in? I don't know I'm not him. If you hurt my dog on purpose you won't need surgery you worthless shit stain. You can't fuck with people then act like they're in the wrong for returning bullshit that you started. If you hit someone once, and they hit you back once, you are not then entitled to hit them again because they hit you back. If you go around starting shit and someone retaliates, you did it to your damn self. This is how you get John Wick to happen. If you hurt my dog I'd make you eat your fucking easy, you fucking dick. If you hurt a dog on purpose, you deserve to have all your shoes completely ruined beyond repair. Fucking monster.